all right so we'll venture into the new form of trigonometry uh, you would have to unlearn a few things that you learned till your class 10 about trigonometry and we'll give a new look to trigonometry uh, give it a generalized appearance you would have to break loose from the fact that has been imposed upon you terribly imposed upon you about trigonometry being about uh, trigonometry confined to a right angle triangle we would look at the trigonometric ratios in a very general manner very general manner now this is the cartesian plane the xy plane and you know different points on these planes are located by different pairs of numbers x comma y an ordered pair x comma y would locate different points in the plane now imagine a rotating line imagine a rotating line let's say this is a rotating line op whose length is r imagine a rotating line op whose length is r and with this rotating line we are going to associate an angle theta we are going to associate an angle theta with this rotating line if the line has rotated in the anti clockwise sense with respect to the positive direction of the x axis look this angle theta will always be measured with respect to the positive direction of the x axis this is the positive direction of the x axis henceforth this would be our reference line for measurement of angles towards measurement of angles when the line rotates in an anti clockwise sense with respect to the positive direction of the x axis we deem the angle theta as positive in contrast when it rotates in the clockwise sense with respect to the positive direction of the x axis we refer to that angle as negative for example suppose this is the position of the rotating line and let's say this angle is 30 degrees in magnitude then the theta here would be plus 30 with this position of the rotating line the angle that you would associate would be plus 30 angle measured with respect to the positive direction going in the anti clockwise sense would always be referred to as a positive number whereas suppose this be the position of the rotating line and you choose to measure the angle theta this way you choose to measure the angle theta this way and suppose the magnitude of this angle is 30 degrees then along with the sign this angle would actually be referred to as minus 30 degrees this would be a negative angle however there are very many angles that would describe the same position of the rotating line the same position of the rotating line could be described by many angles for example look at this position of the rotating line look at this position of the rotating line now one way to describe the angle that it makes with the positive direction of the x axis suppose this angle is 30 degrees in magnitude suppose this angle is 30 degrees in magnitude so one way to describe the position of this rotating line is by saying well theta equal to minus 30 degrees which means that if you go an angle of 30 degrees in the clockwise sense with respect to the positive direction of the x axis then you can locate the rotating line that's one way the other way to measure the same position of the rotating line is well you could have said to arrive at this position of the rotating line i go anti clockwise like this i go anti clockwise like this but realize that this angle if this is 30 degrees in magnitude then this angle would be 350 degrees and the manner in which the op is arrived at if you rotate 
this way, if you go this way, that is anti-clockwise, is positive because this angle then would be referred to as 330 degrees. That means both theta equal to minus 30 degrees and theta equal to 330 degrees are ways of describing, equivalent ways of describing the same position of the rotating line. Or, or you could even have said, well, not just 330 degrees, you could have gone 330 degrees plus another 360 degrees, right? A 330 degree plus another 360 degrees. That's another way to locate the same position of the rotating line. Or 330 degrees plus 360 and another 360. That's yet another way of describing the same position of the rotating line. So, the same position of the rotating line can be described in many ways. Now, having understood this idea, I hope all of you are clear with this, right? Now, think of a rotating line of length r. OP is the length. OP is the length. So, OP would always be a positive number. While this rotating line of a given length r rotates, the point P, the tip of the rotating line, would have different coordinates x, y. This point P, the tip of the rotating line, this point P, the tip of the rotating line, x, y, while it rotates, would have coordinates that will depend on the angle theta. For different thetas in general, you have different pairs of x and y available for the tip P of the rotating line. Now, suppose the rotating line has rotated an angle theta. In the process, the tip of the rotating line assumes coordinates x, y. We then end up redefining our trigonometric ratios away from the right-angled description of trigonometric ratios is as follows. We then define sin theta for example, sin theta for example, as the y coordinate of the tip, the y coordinate of the tip which could be positive or it could be negative, could be positive or it could be negative. Sin theta is described as y, the y coordinate of the tip of the rotating line divided by the length r of the rotating line. That's sin theta. We define cos theta. We define cos theta as the x coordinate of the tip divided by r and we define tan theta as the y coordinate of the, I'm sorry, y coordinate of the tip divided by x. That's how trigonometric ratios are defined based on the coordinates of the tip of a given rotating line of a known length r, of a known length r. x and y are algebraic. Based on where the point P lies, x and y would have their own signs. Now, all of you understand that the xy plane is categorized into four quadrants. This is referred to as the first quadrant. This is referred to as the second quadrant. Now, in the first quadrant, realize that both x and y are positive. In the first quadrant, x and y are both positive numbers. The x and the y coordinates of any point in the first quadrant would be positive. In the second quadrant, x is less than 0 and y is greater than 0. For any point P lying in the second quadrant, the x coordinate would be negative whereas the y coordinate would be positive. The third quadrant, for any point P in the third quadrant, the x coordinate would be negative and so will the y coordinate be. The fourth quadrant, this is the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, 
x would be positive and y would be negative for any so these are the four quarters in which we def we define all points in the xy plane in a given plane so a given plane in general is fragmented into four quarters the first quadrant the second quadrant the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant in the first quadrant like you understand x and y are positive in the second quadrant x is negative whereas y is positive in the third quadrant x is negative y is positive y is also negative in the fourth quadrant x positive whereas y negative and this is how trigonometric ratios are defined in general which has nothing to do with a right angle triangle ring really. and if i define my trigonometric ratios in this manner then theta could have any value it could be acute it could be obtuse it could be any number as you want so this is very generalized this is very generalized and has no bearing on the existence of a right angle triangle so from now on you are not going to look at trigonometric ratios from the perspective of a right angle triangle or an acute angle theta can be acute obtuse or of any value depending on the coordinates of the point p the trigonometric ratios of the corresponding angle theta could be defined as follows and of course cosec theta would be 1 by sin theta sec theta would be 1 by cos theta and cot theta would be 1 by tan theta etc now the important thing and which would be very evident very obvious is the following this position of the rotating line this position of the rotating line could have been arrived at in very many ways a certain position of the rotating line could have been arrived in very many ways that means the tip p could assume this position the tip p could have assumed this position that is could have had coordinates x comma y could have had coordinates x comma y if the rotating line rotated an angle theta or it rotated an angle 360 degrees plus theta or it rotated an angle 360 degrees into 2 plus theta and so on so forth right you could rotate 360 degrees from this position this is the reference line by the way this is theta equal to 0 degrees theta is 0 degrees this is theta is 0 degrees right you could have gone theta you could have rotated theta and arrived at coordinates x comma y or you could have rotated theta plus 360 degrees and you could have still arrived at coordinates x comma y you could have rotated 360 degrees into 2 plus theta and could have yet arrived at the same coordinates x comma y of the tip of the rotating line and it's just the tip of the rotating line which is uh, instrumental in defining the corresponding trigonometric ratios which means now can i not say the following if sin theta is y by r you can also say well sin of 360 degrees plus theta right that means if the rotating line has rotated 360 degrees plus theta the rotating line has rotated 360 degrees plus theta the tip would still arrive at this point x comma y and if the tip still arrives at the same point x comma y then the corresponding trigonometric ratio would still be the same that means again same with cos theta so cos of 360 degrees plus theta is cos theta and tan of 360 degrees plus theta would be tan theta so the trigonometric ratios the trigonometric ratios will depend will depend only on the final position of the rotating line the trigonometric ratios will depend only on the final position of the rotating line whether you rotate theta or you rotate you arrive at this position same position of the rotating line by rotating this angle this angle is how much if this angle is theta this angle is how much this is 360 minus theta but if this is 360 minus theta in magnitude this is 360 degrees minus theta in magnitude if you take it along with its sign realize that you are going in with sense you are moving in the clockwise sense in the clockwise sense this angle would be referred to as minus of 360 degrees minus theta minus of 360 degrees minus theta which means 
the value of a trigonometric ratio for theta would be the same as the value of the trigonometric ratio for minus 360 minus theta. That means if sine of theta is something, then sine of minus 360 minus theta would also be the same thing. Why? Because both these rotations, both these rotations lead to the same position of the rotating line, lead to the same position of the rotating line and therefore the same coordinates x comma y of the tip of the rotating line leading to description of trigonometric ratios as y by r, x by r, y by x as described. So, it does not matter how much the rotating line has rotated as long as, as long as you arrive at the same final position of the rotating line, same final position of the rotating line, it will bear the same value of the trigonometric ratios. So, the things that we have learned so far in this number one, the positive direction of the x axis, the positive direction of the x axis is the reference for measurement of angles. After all, when you measure angles, you need to have a reference line. So, the positive direction of the x axis is the reference line for measurement of angles. So, this is referred to as theta equal to 0 degrees. Any departure from the positive direction of the x axis, any departure from the positive direction of the x axis, in the clock anti clockwise sense, in the anti clockwise sense, would lead to positive description of angles. Any departure of a rotating line referred to the positive direction of the x axis in the clockwise sense would lead to negative description of angles. Angles described then would be referred to as negative angles. So, this is the key thing number one. Number two, the value of the trigonometric ratios will be defined only in terms of the coordinates x comma y of the tip and the length of the rotating line under consideration. And that is how those trigonometric ratios are defined. So, whether you are rotating 120 degrees or you are rotating 120 degrees plus 360 degrees or 120 degrees plus 720 degrees, as long as you are arriving at the same final position of the rotating line as long as you are arriving at the same final position of the rotating line, you would get the same value of the trigonometric ratio. That means, sine of 120 degrees would be the same as sine of 120 degrees plus 360 degrees would be the same as sine of 120 degrees plus 720 degrees and so on and so forth. You will have the same value of the trigonometric ratio. And not just that, I also said that Suppose the rotating line has rotated 120 degrees. This is 120 degrees. That means you could have arrived at this position of the rotating line by describing 120 degrees in the anticlockwise sense. This is anticlockwise sense. Now, if this is 120 degrees, this angle in magnitude is 240 degrees. This angle in magnitude is 240 degrees, but in order to arrive at this position of the rotating line in moving in a clockwise sense, in a clockwise sense, then the algebraic angle described, the algebraic angle described would be minus 240 degrees. That means the trigonometric ratio for 120 degrees would be the same as the trigonometric ratios for minus 240 degrees or would be the same as the trigonometric ratio for 120 plus 360 degrees or 120 plus 720 degrees and so on and so forth. So, it does not matter. You will have the same, I repeat, you will have the same value of the trigonometric ratio as long as you are able to arrive at the same final position of the rotating line and therefore the same pair of coordinates, same pair of coordinates of the tip of the rotating line. Is that clear? Right? Now, once you understand this, let me arrive at few more results related to this. Let me arrive at a few more results related to this. Suppose this is a rotating line OP 
and this angle is theta. This angle is theta. Suppose the coordinates of P at this position of the rotating line are x0, y0. x0, y0 are the coordinates of the tip of the rotating line. And let's say this this length is r. This length is r. Now, let's say another position of the rotating line, another position of the rotating line, let's say OP prime, and this position arrived by, arrived at by moving in a clockwise sense, by moving in a clockwise sense, the same angle theta. So, then this angle would be referred to as minus theta. If this angle in an anti-clockwise sense is referred to as theta, then this angle in a clockwise sense would be referred to as minus theta. This angle would be referred to as minus theta. Alright. Now, given this, given this, and this length again is the same as this length because we are talking of the same rotating line, same rotating line with its one end fixed at O, and the other end swiveling in the xy plane. The other end swiveling in the xy plane. Alright. If the coordinates of P are x0, y0, that means this length is x0. Then what's the x coordinate of P prime? See? If the x coordinate of P is x0, then the x coordinate of P prime would also be x0. This one. Now, the y coordinate, this length realized is equal to this length. Why? Because this triangle is congruent to this triangle. This triangle is congruent to this triangle. So, if the co y coordinate of P is y0, then the y coordinate of P prime would be minus y0. Y coordinate of P prime would be minus y0. Y coordinate of P prime would be minus y0. So then, let's start connecting the trigonometric ratios for theta and the trigonometric ratios for minus theta. What is sine theta? When you talk of sine theta, you are talking of this position of the rotating line. You are talking of this position of the rotating line and therefore you are referring to the coordinates of this point P. That is x0, y0, x0, y0. Sine theta is defined as the y coordinate of the tip divided by r. Y coordinate of the tip divided by r, where r is a positive number always because that refers to the length of the rotating line. Sine theta is like a y naught divided by r. Sine theta is like a y naught divided by r. Now, when I speak of sine of minus theta, when I speak of sine of minus theta, that means sine of this angle sine of this angle, then I would have to look at the coordinates of this tip, P prime, coordinates of this tip. What is the y coordinate of P prime? The y coordinate of P prime is minus y naught. That means sine minus theta is going to be minus y naught divided by sine of minus theta would be minus y naught, y coordinate of this tip divided by r, that is sine of minus theta. What does it lead to? As you can see, sine of minus theta becoming the same as sine theta. Sine of minus theta becoming the same as sine theta. So, that is an important result. Sorry, sine minus theta being minus sine theta. I am so sorry. Sine minus theta is minus sine theta. Sine of minus theta being minus sine theta. That is an important result. Sine minus theta is minus sine theta. Now, what about cos theta? When you talk of cos theta, you will talk of this position of the rotating line and therefore it is going to be x0 divided by r, x0 divided by r. What about cos of minus theta? Cos of minus theta again would be the x coordinate of the point P prime which is x0 same as P, right, x0 divided by r leading to cos minus theta being equal to cos theta, cos minus theta being equal to cos theta. That is another important result, that is another important result 
cos minus theta being equal to cos theta. And then look at tan theta. Look at tan theta. Tan theta is what? Tan theta is y naught divided by x naught. Y naught divided by x naught. Tan theta is the y coordinate of the tip divided by the x coordinate of the tip. Y coordinate of the tip here is y naught divided by the x coordinate of the tip. That's x naught. That's tan theta. And what about tan minus theta? Tan minus theta would be the y coordinate of the tip which is minus y naught divided by the x coordinate of the tip that is x naught. X naught. What does it lead to? It leads to realize the tan minus theta turns out to be minus tan theta because these two numbers are negative of each other, are negative of each other. So then tan minus theta is minus tan theta is minus tan theta. Tan minus theta is minus tan theta. Now, <coughs> these are some important results uh, in uh, what we refer to as associate angles, trigonometric associate angles. And let me also bring you face to face with the new unit of angle. So far, they've, they've mentioned degrees as the only way to measure an angle theta. From now on, we look at a bigger unit of measurement of an angle theta. The bigger unit of measurement of an angle theta is referred to as a radian. A radian. The different unit that we are looking at now is radian. So by and large, we would, uh, we would look at the angle not always in degrees but also in radians. The new unit of measurement of an angle. The new unit of measurement of an angle is radians. We we'll look at, see, what you have learned so far is degrees, that's your old measurement of angle and then the new unit of measurement of angle is going to be what we refer to as a radian. Radians. This is the new unit of measurement of angles. So then, how do we how do we migrate from degrees to radians and vice versa? What's the conversion? What's the conversion for migration from degrees to radians? The migration is provided by the following. We define pi radians, where pi you know is approximately 22 by 7. Pi you know is approximately 22 by 7 or close to 3.14 or close to 3.14. Pi radians is 180 degrees. Pi radians is 180 degrees. That means one radian would be 180 by pi degrees. One radian would be 180 by pi degrees. And conversely, if 180 degrees is pi radians, if 180 degrees is pi radians, if 180 degrees is pi radians, then 1 degree would be pi by 180 radians. 1 degree would be pi by 180 radians. That's 1 degree. 1 degree is pi by 180 radians. That means, let's say, 30 degrees. 30 degrees would be pi by 180 into 30 radians. That is pi by 6 radians. 30 degrees would be pi by 6 radians. 45 degrees would be pi by 180 into 45 radians that is 
pi by 4 radians that is pi by 4 radians 60 degrees would be pi by 180 into 60 radians that is pi by 3 radians similarly 90 degrees would be pi by 180 into 90 radians that is pi by 2 radians and so on so forth and so on so forth the conversion is this one degree each degree is pi by 180 radians each degree is like a pi by 180 radians using this you can convert any angle in degrees to the corresponding angle in radians to the corresponding angle in radians so suppose theta is known in degrees if theta is known in degrees then each degree each degree would be pi by 180 radians each degree would be pi by 180 radians so theta degrees would be these many radians if we have theta in degrees if we have theta in degrees then the corresponding angle in radians is going to be pi by 180 into theta this would be the angle in radians this would be angle in radians if you have theta degrees given to you you want to find how many radians are contained in theta degrees then the radians contained in theta degrees would be pi by 180 into theta pi by 180 into theta these many radians would be convert would be contained in theta degrees so that's the migration from radians to degrees or degrees to radians so given a certain angle in degrees you want to find the equivalent angle in radians then all that you need to do is multiply by pi by 180 pi by 180 would give you the conversion from degrees to radians from degrees to radians